Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest ROS based on Android 13. This build just released on 10th April 2023 and I have been trying this ROM for about 2 days now and there is also a GApps included and GApps excluded variant and of course I have flashed the GApps included variant here. Now this is the initial build in the about section. This is how it looks like we still get the ROS logo up top looks beautiful. We have the ROS version as 13.1 and this says GApps official build. And this is for Sweetin or Redmi Note 10 Pro Indian version. And the security patch here is of March 5th, 2023, not quite April yet. The stock kernel is the 4.14 perf kernel. And the build date here you can see again 10th April 2023. In the system panel, we do have a device specific settings. In here, you can change the refresh rate to always 120 Hz. I don't know if it's a bug or what exactly is it. I have this high refresh rate selected to 120 Hz all day long, but with that, in the test UFO website, if you're noticing, I'm getting only 60 FPS or it is 60 Hertz. I don't know if it's a bug, but yeah, even if I set this to 60 to 120 Hertz, which is kind of automatic, you can say, but even with that, as you can see, my FPS is stuck at 60 FPS or 60 Hertz. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but yeah, this is how it is. And in the direct settings, we have the headset kind of settings in here. You will get multiple presets of the headsets. And I have been using it with the youth edition. The sound quality with the headphone jack has been amazing. No issues with that. And we have the choose preset options too. Then we have this hi-fi audio option as well. In the updated settings, you can check for updates. And this is similar looking as it used to for ROS. It is ROS version 13.1 GApps and the current build and the newer build. Whenever there is a newer update will appear over here. On Redmi Note 10 Pro, most of you should be encrypted and I'm encrypted as well. And once there is a newer update, you can of course install it from this updater as well. In the gesture settings, we do have the quickly open camera settings and there we have the system navigation gestures. In the settings of it, we have the swipe to invoke assistant that works perfectly fine. Left edge, right edge customization. Then we have the gesture bar hiding option, this pill bar. There is no thickness or the length customization as of right now for the pill bar. Maybe they will be added in the future updates. This is the initial build again. There is a three button navigation. There is the invert layout option for that as well. Then the one handed mode is also working fine and you can customize it for showing notification and stuff. And the quick torch is there. It is working fine. I have tested it. And there is the press and hold power button action. You can change it to power menu or digital assistant. There is also the option for the advanced reboot. And let me show you there in the power menu. If you tap on advanced, you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. Then there is the swipe rig screenshot option. I have enabled that. And with that, there is the capture mode, the delete option, edit option, and the share options as well. Then we have this quick pull down for the quick settings that is actually working fine. As you can see, just swiping once from the right here brings the quick setting panel. And here, if you just bring it from the middle, it will bring you the shorter kind of quick setting panel with the notification panel. And here we have this prevent ringing, the playback control and the volume rocker wake kind of thing. So that's pretty much it. Now, let me talk about the overall experience and in terms of the home screen and stuff, how it looks like. For me, the Google App Data Backup usually did not work for Evolution X ROMs and stuff, but here it worked perfectly fine. It restored everything from my Google App Data Backup. So that's a huge thumbs up from me because it could restore everything from the SMS and the call logs and even app data and stuff has been restored with this particular arrow way. So no issues whatsoever with the Google App Data Backup restored. If you are relying on it, you can 100% do that for arrow ways. Now in terms of the home screen, it has the arrow launcher and the wallpaper that I have been using is from the Walpi app. On the bottom, it is too much to the bottom side, I would say. There should be a search panel or something to fill that gap in my personal usage. But yeah, this is the dock of the bottom is too much to the bottom. Like once you're holding the device like this, it is really hard to reach all the way over here. So yeah, that is one thing that I've noticed except for that in the home screen settings, we do have this Google feed. This is for the left side feed and we have the allow home screen rotation, lock layout, then the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen is there. No issues with that. Then we have the add app icons to the home screen, the newer icons and the show icon labels on desktop, notification dots, and the drawer kind of labels. Then we have the parallel space as well. You can create a space, like you can have two accounts of WhatsApp and stuff, all these features, you can do that. And there is a developer option. To the left of the home screen, this is how it looks like. We have the search panel right here, and we have the Google's Discover page working perfectly fine with 120 Hertz. Swiping up, we'll get to the app drawer, and you can search for any particular app over here. No problems with that. The widgets in the home screen are working fine, but certain widgets of Google, you cannot really find over here like let me show you in the widget section if i search battery there is no battery widget even if you search weather there is no weather widget present over here 
So these are kind of a limited kind of experience I would say but the clock widget and stuff is working perfectly fine. No issues even in the animations you can see. Swiping down in the home screen will get you to the quick setting panel. No problems with that. And talking about the quick setting panel, well, some of the toggles might be missing like the DC dimming and stuff are missing over here. I cannot simply find it. But there is the always on display toggle and let me show you what else I have added. I have the Wi-Fi, the mobile data, the Bluetooth toggle, then the flashlight and stuff working perfectly fine. Dark theme, Google Home controls and the auto rated battery saver. Then we have the screen recording option and you have the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time. There is no HEVC recording option over here. There is the data saver, then the night light, always on display toggle, hotspot, heads up, the sound toggle, airplane mode, do not disturb nearby share and the one handed mode. That's it. On the top, you will get the clock and the date and we have the battery then the Wi-Fi kind of toggles and the network toggles you can get. Of course, I don't have a SIM card in the device right now, but if you insert a SIM card, quality calling and stuff should be working perfectly fine. Then we have the Bluetooth kind of battery status. It also shows up in the status bar if you are wondering about the Bluetooth battery stats. Now let's talk about the camera situation. Well, I'm pretty disappointed about this one only because this is why I did not insert my SIM card on the device because this one has this older kind of looking Google camera. It doesn't look good. Very basic kind of camera experience you will get with it. So yeah, and that is why I have installed the Gcam 8.4, I guess. This is the Shamim version. I, I will list this in the description. And this Gcam should be working perfectly fine. Let me just take a quick picture. So I just captured this photo. The details with this Gcam is amazing, no issues. And if you want to see the info of this, this is a 12 megapixel photo. So yeah, overall, the camera experience should be good enough with this Gcam and there is a night sight mode and stuff. You can definitely customize that. The portrait kind of picture should be working great. And once you're using the front camera, as you can see, there is the black border on the screen of the front camera around the front camera, you'd say. So there won't be any halo effect with whenever you are using the front camera. But yes, there is no MIUI camera present by default, which is a bummer in my opinion. I cannot really get the full potential of the Redmi Note 10 Pro's cameras with these kind of Gcams and stuff, I would say. Yes, the Gcams work great, but you cannot really get that MIUI kind of optimization. That's how I feel. That's my personal opinion, by the way. In the battery settings, you won't get to see the battery temperature, the charging cycle, all those things. Just forget about them. You only get this battery percentage enabling option. And talking about battery life, this is great because with the Aku battery app, the estimated screen on time that I got is about 7 hours and 24 minutes, which is huge and even the screen off or the standby time you can see it's about 11 days here it shows and the combined use here it shows about 36 hours so the battery life of this rom is amazing even on standby i have seen it is not decreasing the battery at all almost and in the health section for me it shows at about 78 percent yes my device is kind of old so my battery health is getting lower and lower it was earlier 82 percent maybe with more charging cycles it will increase a bit around 80 percent but yeah, right now it is at 78%. And even the fast charging and stuff should be working perfectly fine. You do not need to worry about it. In the sound and vibration settings, this is how it looks like. We have the media call, ring, etc. volume controls, the vibration and haptics. You can customize this in call vibrations if you want. Then the touch feedback, then the media vibration, etc. If you scroll down more, we have the show volume panel on the left side, touch sounds and the charging sound and stuff, all these things. By the way, this is how the volume panel looks like. You can increase or decrease the volume like this. And if you press here, you will get this expanded kind of volume panel on the screen and of course there is no volume switching option over here but let me actually play some music okay so here in the detailed volume panel as you can see there is the output device switching option you can switch it to the other speaker and stuff or other bluetooth headsets that you are connected to from right here in the display settings we have the brightness level adaptive or auto brightness and we have the lock screen kind of customization in here we have the always show time and info double line clock then the control from lock device and the show device controls for the google home controls then we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes then we have the dark theme we have this dark theme enabling option and scheduling and the pitch black option is also there then we have the colors you can choose it to saturated or boosted depending on your usage and we have the double tap to wake and sleep then we have the status bar items headset bluetooth extra icons are here and even we have this time kind of option and the battery option separately let me go back we have the full screen apps and you can choose per app to actually change it to full screen over here we have the show data usage ignore window secure flags option as well in the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks like you can change the wallpapers from here and we have this on device wallpaper as the ROS default wallpaper over here. Eight colors for the basic and the wallpaper colors over here. But if you change the wallpaper, of course, there will be 16 colors, I guess. Then we have the dark theme, the themed icons, 
app grid is there up to 6x6 but I have been using it with a 5x5 the icon pack you can actually change over here that's really cool you can choose from any icon pack from here then we have the font settings and in here you will get multiple fonts five options I would say then we have the shape option and you can change that and you can apply whichever you like more in the security settings let me show you we do not have a quick unlock but we do have the fingerprint option there is no face unlock as of right now but there is the app lock which is good to see and in here we have the protected app settings you can lock any particular app that you are willing to and let me show you yes the app lock is working perfectly fine I just tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see app locks works perfectly fine and here if I double tap in the blank area of the home screen this is how it locks and on the lock screen there is the lock screen shortcuts too and here it opens with one click as you can see you don't have to tap and hold on it but here we also have this like, camera option and you have to select a camera then it will open of course now let's talk about the fingerprint scanner speed for the like normal locking and unlocking and yeah they work perfectly fine let me show you a couple more times So yeah, fingerprint scanner is unlocking perfectly fine for normal unlocking and locking and even for the app lock it is working great. Now let's talk about the basic features. Yes, safety net passes right out of the box so you should be able to use banking apps right out of the box. The DRM info stays as L1 here so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p and the IR Blaster is also working fine. And in terms of Google Photos, yes, you do get the unlimited Google Pixel backup over here. No need to worry about that. Right now, it is back with 120 hertz, I guess, in the test of website. So I think there was a bug with the refresh rate once you go into that menu. So yeah, right now it is working with 120 FPS here, but it does have the sync failure for some reason. But yeah, 120 hertz from time to time should be working fine. It is an initial build so that will be fixed maybe in the future updates but otherwise overall performance of the ui is smooth enough you do not need to worry about the overall performance of the ui and even scrolling let me actually show you over here yes once the contents actually loads up yes the smoothness of the twitter scrolling is working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever with scrolling at all and if you are wondering about the android and geekbench score with the cpu stress test you can see from the screen right now for this particular 10th April build of AROS 2023. So let me in the comments guys if you like the latest AROS based on Android 13 and if you have liked it and what are the things that you are looking for when you flash a custom ROM let me know in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDNDX signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.